How many years in prison would every single villain from Scooby-Doo Where Are You get for their crimes? Well... In the very first episode of the series, What a Night for a Night, Mr. Wickles dresses up as the Black Knight to sell stolen artwork and replace them with forged copies. Add that to the kidnapping of Professor White and his false imprisonment, and four menacing charges, he's looking at about 35 years in Coolsville Penitentiary and hella fines. In A Clue for Scooby-Doo, Captain Cutler steals by my count 11 yachts, and at 3 years for each count is looking at about 33 years in prison. On top of that, he also repainted and sold them, so that's another 3 years per, so let's call it 66 years. Plus another 9 for the false imprisonments, and another 3 for menacing, so now we're up to 78. Also, Miss Cutler was helping him out, so she's getting 3 years as well. Unlucky. In Hassel in the Castle, Bluestone the Great tries to steal the treasure of Vasquez, but technically since the property is abandoned, no harm done. But he does scare the gang, so I got him for menacing charges. Oh, and apparently he was already on the run from the cops, so... That'll be 13 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In Mind Your Own Business, Hank, aka Miner 49er, scares away the residents of Gold City in order to buy the land for cheap and drill for the oil. Assuming he also buys the mineral rights as well, we can really only get him for menacing, so 3 years. Also, a misdemeanor reckless driving charge for the handcar chase, so another 90 days. In Decoy for a Dog Napper, Buckmaster steals a bunch of dogs participating in an upcoming dog show. Since they are for a show, I'm going to assume that they're over $950 in value, and therefore each count will be for felony grand theft, carrying a 3 year penalty for each. Add that to the false imprisonment of Daphne, and Buck's looking at 12 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In What the Heck's Going On, Uncle Stuart tries to swindle his family into giving him the fortune. He dresses up like Elias Kingston, kidnaps Sharon, and falsely imprisons the gang. At 8 years for the kidnapping and 3 years per false imprisonment, plus another 6 for potentially hurting Shaggy, Uncle Stuart's looking at 29 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In Never Ape and Ape Man, Stuntman Carl dresses up in the ape costume and... throws candy off a bridge? I got him for attempted murder, open and shut case. Also, just to be petty, I'll tack on an identity theft charge for pretending to be Scooby, and the child endangerment of Shaggy, so let's make that life in prison plus 9 years. In Foul Play and Funland, Miss Jenkins sabotages her brother's robot, Charlie, causing chaos around the theme park. Technically, nothing bad happened aside from some small damage around the park, so if he wanted to, Mr. Jenkins could take it to small claims court. But her excuse was robots shouldn't be near children trying to have fun, so she's gonna get a pass from me. In the backstage rage, the Puppet Master Pietro runs a counterfeiting operation out of the Old Strand Theater. That'll net him 20 years in jail, and a fine of $250,000. Add that to 3 counts of child endangerment, and 4 counts of menacing, he's looking at an even 50 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In Bedlam in the Big Top, Harry the Hypnotist uses a gold coin to hypnotize Shaggy into taming a lion, and he very well could have died. Not only that, but he locks Freddy in the trunk and hypnotizes Scooby to do the high wire stunt, so with the false imprisonment and the animal abuse charges, he is looking at life in prison plus 6 years. In a gaggle of galloping ghosts, Big Bob Oakley scares away the people from Franken Castle so he can search for the Franken treasure alone. To add to that, he kidnaps and hides Daphne in the dungeon. He chases the gang around the castle, and he's already wanted in seven states. With all of his charges, Big Bob's looking at a big 34 years in the big house. In Scooby-Doo and a Mummy 2, Dr. Najib dresses up like a mummy to try and steal an ancient coin. In the process, he kidnaps the professor and keeps him tied up in the shed, breaks some of the museum artifacts, chases the gang, and even tries to kill them with the circular saw. As a result, I sentenced him to 4 consecutive life terms, plus another 30 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In Which Witch is Witch, 
Zeke and Zeb dress up as a zombie and a witch, scaring away people in the swamps as they look for an armored truck that they sunk after they stole it. That'll be 20 years for both, and along with the false imprisonment of Daphne, and their menacing charges, Zeke's looking at 26 years, while Zeb will get 35 in Coolsville Penitentiary. In Go Away Ghost Ship, C.L. Magnus dresses up like the ghost of Redbeard in order to commit insurance fraud by stealing his own cargo. That's an easy 5 years in prison, as well as a $50,000 fine. Along with that, we've got 4 counts of attempted manslaughter, 3 counts of false imprisonment, assault with a deadly weapon, and an animal abuse charge, and Magnus is going to get 65 years in Coastal Penitentiary and a $70,000 fine. In Spooky Space Kook, Henry Bascombe scares away people from the abandoned airfield after hearing it would reopen again soon. He adds a child endangerment charge when he hooks Freddy and hoists him up, bringing a sentence up to 18 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In A Night of Fright is No Delight, Cosgood Creeps and Mr. Crawls try to scare off the heirs of the fortune to Colonel Beauregard Sanders. Inheritance hijacking carries a sentence of 15 years, and when added to 8 counts of menacing and 2 counts of child endangerment, they are both looking at 51 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In the season 1 finale, that's Snow Ghost, Mr. Greenway dresses up as a snow ghost as a part of a Joel smuggling operation to send them across the border. With an attempted manslaughter charge, attempted murder, child endangerment, and animal abuse to go with it, Mr. Greenway is looking at life in prison plus 42 years, with Mr. Leach receiving 10 years for the Joel smuggling operation. In the season 2 premiere, Nowhere to Hide, Dr. Jekyll turns into the Ghost of Hyde in order to steal the jewels from the Movar collection of rare jewels. Add that grand theft charge onto the breaking and entering and evading police, plus the menacing child abduction, kidnapping, and false imprisonment, and he's looking at 28 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. Unfortunately for him, he can't blame it on DID in this case. In Mystery Mask Mix-Up, Mr. Fong dresses up as Chinese warlord Zen Tuo in order to conduct his international smuggling ring. As the leader, he's going to take the biggest fall here, and his rap sheet includes grand theft, child abduction and kidnapping, false imprisonment, and reckless driving. Oh yeah, and attempted murder. All these add up to a life sentence plus 50 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In Scooby's Night with a Frozen Fright, Professor Wayne disguises himself as the caveman in order to steal Professor Ingstrom's new marine communication device. As the caveman, he falsely imprisoned Shaggy and Velma and tried to kill them with ice, so that's two life sentences right there. Plus the animal abuse and menacing charges, he's getting two life sentences plus 21 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In Jeepers, it's the Creeper. Mr. Carswell dresses up as the Creeper to rob his own bank. He kidnapped his bank guard and tied him up in his basement. While chasing the gang, he runs them off the road and steals the mystery machine as well, bringing his total sentence up to 81 years in Coolsville Penitentiary and $1 million worth of fines. Ouch. In Haunted House Hangup, Asa Shanks dresses up as the Spectre to look for the Stillwall fortune. Trying to scare the gang away, he chases them around the mansion, which nets him another charge of menacing. So, in total, he's looking at about 13 and a half years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In A Tiki Scare is No Fair, John Sims runs an illegal pearl poaching operation and tries to scare away the locals and the gang so no one finds it. That'll net him and his henchmen 23 years in a Hawaiian prison and a $5,000 fine. In Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Werewolf, the sheep wrestler dresses up as a werewolf to scare away people from the sawmill where the sheep smuggling operation is based. Since the average sheep runs for about $300, we got him for felony theft of livestock, which carries a punishment of a year in prison and a $1,000 fine per sheep stolen. Along with the usual menacing charges, assault with a deadly weapon and three false imprisonments, he's looking at about 26 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In the series finale, Don't Fool with a Phantom, Roger Stevens dresses up as the Phantom in order to embezzle money from the TV station. He ties up Johnny Grisby and the gang, and he also put Shaggy and Scooby on the conveyor belt leading to Molten Wax, which would probably kill them. He intended to fly to South America and have Grisby take the blame for everything. With everything considered, I'm going to give him life in prison plus 38 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. And that'll conclude my legal analysis of Scooby-Doo Where Are You? If you made it this far into the video, thank you. 
I'm in the process of doing this for What's New Scooby-Doo as well, so that should be fun. But until then, uh, bye.